So welcome back everyone. Um, so for the last presentation for today, it is my sincere pleasure to uh, introduce Josh. So Josh was, uh, was born in 1972 in Germany and after school he studied physics and philosophy at the University of Bonn. He graduated in astrophysics in 2002 and finished his postgraduate uh, post studies in 2006 with a thesis about the disk structure of warped galaxies. Um, in his work life, Josh has fulfilled many roles. He started off as a scientist in Bonn, uh, moving on to Aston in 2008, where he was involved in radio astronomy research and also the scientific support of the Westerbork Radio Synthesis Telescope. Um, Josh actually joined Sereo in 2014, where he worked on Meerkat, and that is from operations to commissioning, as well as um, scientific endeavors with Meerkat. Um, he also holds an appointment as visiting professor at, your, at Rhodes University. Sadly, Josh will be leaving Sereo at the end of this month, returning to, uh, to, to Germany. And we are glad to have had him for the time we had. He really is one of the outstanding scientists and today he's going to uh, um, present to you um, just the golden rules, the golden nuggets of proposal writing for Meerkat. So Josh? Yeah, oh, thanks a lot for, for this, uh, this, this very, very kind introduction. Um, good afternoon everybody. Um, so today I uh, I wanted to introduce you in into the um, the secrets of how to write a proposal for Meerkat, and um, since Meerkat is a telescope like many others, uh, these rules are um, valid for for many other telescopes as well. So um, this is basically directed to people who want to know about the background of what a proposal is, how do I write it, maybe. What uh, are the um, the pitfalls that I have to take into account, and or what, that I have to watch out for, um, in general, but specifically also for uh, the Meerkat um, telescope. So, what is the background of this? Uh, it's the telescope usage. So. Modern telescopes today are mostly shared facilities. It's not like in times of Broad River where I can build a, a telescope in my backyard and uh, do my, um, my science uh, ourselves, even though I think this man was uh, probably the, an example for a very dedicated scientist even building an instrument himself, private instrument. But these days are far gone. So modern telescopes, modern professional telescopes that uh, you can use to do astronomy, they are mostly shared facilities because no one can, or not even an institute um, itself, can afford them um, on their own. So that leads to, a, to the necessity of a telescope program to be established. So time needs to be shared. That means that the telescope program has to be made, has to be set up. And uh, the, the driver behind this is that since uh, so many um, rand have been spent on a telescope, the telescope time should be optimally used. And this is where the problem starts, because optimal is obviously pretty relative. So what is it? Well, obviously, you want to do the best possible science. So let's say aliens have just been discovered. So best possible science would be to study the signal from the, the aliens. But this would mean that astronomers, normal astronomers like me, um, or other astronomers like me, would scream and say, hey, what about scientific diversity? We also want to have a share in, in the instrument, and not all time should go to exactly one topic, even if it's the most important in the world. So we also want to want to have some sharing. Then, of course, um, the telescope has to sell to the politicians. In the case of an alien, they will probably want us to observe um, the aliens all day long, or the signal of the aliens all day long. But 
Under normal circumstances, it's a measure that they are taking is the number of output papers or the impact of output, output or the, the research that can be done uh, on the telescope. Then there is human capital development. Uh, if uh, several countries or, or, um, uh, have invested in a, in a telescope, then they also want their um, scientists, their young scientists, to um, to be supported as best as possible. So this is also an aspect that needs to go into a gauge, uh, what is an optimal use of a telescope. Of course, um, since a community has invested uh, money in, to, uh, in, in, an, in, a, in a scientific facility, it is, uh, it is in their interest to that their national scientific interests, their topics. So, so a nation is completely uninterested in aliens. So they they actually want to use the the telescope for something else. Their interests have to be regarded or have to be taken into account in in, in a certain amount or certain uh, um, ratio as well. And this brings me to the last point that I, I that we might mention here is the fair shake, share, fair share of stakeholders. So people have invested. So country one has invested a million, whatever currency in the telescope, and the other the other country a hundred million. Then there might be a, some ratio as well of the observing time that goes to one nation or the other, unless it's a completely open the telescope uh, open, open to the, the to the whole scientific community. So, the telescope operator, in the case of the Merkur uh, telescope, uh, it is Cerro, needs to decide about the optimal uh, usage of the telescope. And um, this, as as I already said, leads to the necessity of telescope program. The time will then be shared between different instruments. We have different receivers that you can use uh, for the instrument. Larger and smaller projects, um, long-term and short-term projects. It's not the same. So you can have uh, spend a lot of time um, um, in a very small amount of. <laughs> A lot of observing time in a very small amount of time. Actually, uh, that doesn't mean that it, it's a long-term project which uh, runs over several decades uh, or several periods of, of, of observing um, time. Um, then there is planned and also spontaneous observations. Uh, let's take the alien again. Alien says, "Hey." Please look at this direction in the sky because I have a very important message to send across. Uh, then probably uh, we should spontaneously point our telescopes towards that direction and say, "Okay, so whatever we planned before, we're now observing this point on the sky." Uh, another example would be, um, uh, for example, a supernova explosion of extreme strength. Then we want to see the afterglow of that. Uh, and point the, the telescope there. So the telescope operator is the boss, and inside the, the company and inside the, the, the institute, there will also be uh, the, 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 um, the boss, which is in our case the director or the chief um, scientist. But they cannot do what they want, so usually. They are overseen by a board of stakeholders or peers who will basically say in the in in the afterwards um, or after the fact, well, this this what you have done is good or bad, and please do it differently in the future. So there is some sort of control, even though the telescope operator is basically determining what happens with the telescope at the time of the observation. So what usually happens is that the telescope operator, to make sure that um, all the the time is distributed in a fair, 
process establishes a time allocation process, which uh, can take several forms. Uh, there is a, usually a call for proposals. So scientists have the opportunity to propose their, or maybe even not, 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 not really their, uh, science to be observed with the telescope. Then these proposals will be collected. Um, there can be a deadline, a uh, specific deadline, or in some cases, if you have a target of opportunity, um, observations, no deadline. Um, those proposals will be collected um, and reviewed by a scientific, scientific and technical review committee. So proposals will be assessed, so this is good, this is bad, and a recommendation will be made to the time allocation committee. So this time allocation committee has then the um, task to rank and allocate time to the single projects that are uh, proposed for this uh, telescope. The telescope operator, as I said, is the boss, has finally to check and approve these uh, time allocations by the allocation committee. In principle, still, the telescope operator still has the opportunity to overrule and say, no, we're doing something completely different under the uh, uh, condition that he has to justify or she has to justify what has been done uh, in hindsight. And then, well, the observations are carried out by the telescope operator or in that case the, uh, the telescope um, operators, which are physically called operators, <laughs> under consultation of the scientist who proposed. So now, there's different types of project. Um, and again, so this is, this is very, very not different for, for different types of telescopes. Um, so this is, this is generally true for Mercan and, and other telescopes. So there are open time projects. Um, so these are pro projects defined uh, for a smaller period of time. Uh, and uh, selected in a competitive process. Um, and these are usually the proposals where you set a deadline and say, hey, scientists, please send your proposals. We select the project um, involving a formal proposal review. The same is true for large survey projects, but these uh, are usually allowed to be uh, defined over several years. Calls for uh, large survey projects are much, much rarer. And, uh, but also for them, uh, it's uh, true that there is a competitive process uh, involving um, a proposal review like I described just before. A special, uh, a special form of proposal is would be the director's discretionary time um, project or proposal. If there is an urgent project, so um, supernova, what I wrote down is message by, message by aliens, but it, this is stretched now, um, needs to be assessed on a very short notice uh, since it, um, it is either um, a project of very, very high scientific interest that uh, that requires a very quick checking or some um, transient feature that can, can only be observed at, that, at, a, at a specific time. So only a small fraction of time usually goes to DDT pro projects, but they have a, a special assessment. So usually they are easier, time is easier, not, well, not easier, but time is much more informal to get uh, using uh, the DDT um, channel. Then there are stakeholder projects. So some institute has invested a, a huge amount of time uh, under the condition, yeah, well, for this improvement that I have 
um, provided for the instrument, I want to have compensation in time in in, uh, in the form of guaranteed observing time for my institute's scientists, and nobody can touch it. This happens because I, it, it, it may be that the telescope improves such a lot that this is a good deal, um, and it's also also true for Merka, for example. Uh, the other um, the other possibility is that you have idle time on your telescope in a time, for example, where a telescope is uh, um, under construction. And this idle time then you can use for commission and science verification projects. This happened also at, at Merka. Now, proposals are usually very similar amongst each other. Um, it, uh, so the, also the components of an observing proposal are, are usually very similar. I, I'm, I will talk about the specifics of Merkab later on. Um, but of course, first of course, first you have to decide who is proposing. So there is uh, um, the information about the author's name and affiliation, phone number, and and so on. Uh, of a principal investigator. This is the face that is shown to the um, selection committee. Uh, this, this is the person who's responsible uh, for, uh, um, uh, for this project, if it gets selected, and the names and affiliations of the co-investigators. So usually there, one person is selected. It's not necessarily the, the leader of the project, but can also be uh, the person who is best representing the group in front of the, the, the selection time allocation committee. Uh, and this person is then selected to, to represent the, the group. That's the principal investigator. Then uh, there is a short abstract. A summary describing the project, uh, such that uh, the referees or time allocation committee can very quickly read up. Oh, this was this proposal uh, who wanted to observe uh, mountains in Hout Bay for their uh, or um, for their uh, radio structure, um, even though it's impossible. But okay, I remember this. Um, then a short but a little bit longer scientific justification where uh, the authors, um, the proposers, can um, describe what they want to do in, in the program. So these are, uh, for the sake of the um, mental sanity of the time allocation committee, also usually restricted to be quite short. Um, uh, three or four pages uh, is, is usually the case, sometimes even two. Um, so you have to be very concise and uh, convincing uh, on, in, a, on a, in a limited amount of space uh, with your um, proposal. Then there is a, a technical a description and justification. Um, this is where you have to show that, um, or you, where, you, where you're able to show that the telescope is actually able to do to to do your science. So, for for, for example, um, if I'm observing something that's very very dim, um, and I need to use a lot of observing time, uh, then I I would not. I mean, uh, sometimes it's, it's, it doesn't make sense to, to, to do the observations. But um, proving that this is possible is done in this technical description and justification. Uh, you have the means of analysis that uh, nowadays are more and more important. Um, proving, you have to prove that uh, you are actually able to uh, to conduct the analysis uh, once the data are taken. Then there are other aspects. Um, 
the affiliation of the in, in investigators or even their nationality, nationality is important. So as I said, so sometimes there are keys how to distribute the uh, observing time among the stakeholders of the telescope and then the affiliation of the investigators might play a role. Um, as I said, student uh, or human capital uh, um, um, HCD plays a role, so the student involvement uh, sometimes uh, plays a role in, uh, in, in uh, um, uh, proposals. Um, so how many students can I bring from uh, beginners to from a stage to, of beginners to uh, professional radio astronomers um, um, using this project that I, I, I just uh, proposed. And of course, past projects where you can show what you have done and um, what uh, um, and, and that you're actually couple, capable of conducting uh, your experiment. So before you write a proposal, um, you have to prepare. And uh, there is one caution. I mean, usually more observing time is asked for than is available. Uh, that is uh, especially at very modern facilities the case. So you get into a uh, situation of an oversubscription. And that makes a proposal call a competitive situation, um, which means that your proposal has to be good. You have to be convincing. You have to convince the, the program committee to uh, accept your project and to actually conduct your project with the telescope. So you need to be prepared. And um, and define uh, a suitable project. Um, so it has to be an original project or a verification of some sort. Better it is an original project, so some kind of groundbreaking science that I want to propose, and this is why I need the telescope time. Or of course. There's the possibility that it's the verification of something that people have been observing before, and now you need a confirmation of these results. Um, is it part of a bigger project, for example, uh, 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 a PhD project that you are conducting? Uh, that is also a possibility that, that, that you are actually creating a, an observation or the, the proposal uh, for an observation as part of your uh, your PhD project. Or it could be a completely new project. So some idea that you have, aliens could hide behind Mars in a certain way, so you need to observe Mars. Um, that's, uh, that's pretty novel, for example. Um, a very important part is uh, to check if the project is actually feasible. As I said, uh, if, um, if the project is not feasible or deemed to be too expensive in terms of observing time, uh, a program committee will uh, reject your project. So make sure before you spend uh, all your time on writing a proposal, that it is actually feasible. For example, uh, am, I, uh, am I now proposing to observe a source uh, uh, at a declination of about 40 degrees? Shouldn't better propose it for America because it's not visible for America, not, not accessible for America because that's a telescope in the south. Um, is the sensitivity that America can provide or sensitivity that telescope uh, can provide sufficient in a reasonable amount of observing time um, to, to reach the science goals that I actually formulate in my scientific justification. So, or in, in my science. So these are short checks that you should do before you sit down and, and, and uh, write the proposal. And there is one final check that uh, no one should forget, namely uh, check if suitable data are actually already available. 
so check the archives um, of of the um, of the telescopes for observing data which can you which you can use for your project without writing a, a proposal so that's the best situation that you can have somebody else has done the work for you and you can uh, analyze the data without having to write a proposal so the, the the science case of a proposal should always be very concise and simple if possible please keep the number of science objectives as small as possible so as I said, so the program committee or the, 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 the reviewers have to read um, 100 proposals. So only the, they, they, they spend a small amount of time on reading those. So um, the projects which have, which have very simple case are actually sticking best in, in, in the brain. So uh, maybe you are even the best to conduct with a the, with the telescope, because if, if there is a simple case, yeah, I detect this new type of supernova, uh, I detect this, this new type of neutron star uh, with these uh, properties, then I can uh, derive uh, a completely new uh, theory full stop. Thank you. That's, that's 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 very simple in, in a way. Of course, you have to understand your physics behind this, but it's a simple proposal that you could um, that, that is surely has surely better chances than than others. Um, you have to provide the context. So, uh, what which field is the the project about? You have to provide the background of the the, the, the uh, your proposal. What kind of science do I want to um, to, to uh, pursue with the proposal. Uh, scientific merit sh should be high, so why is the proposal com uh, compelling? And uh, usually what helps the proposal is if you have ancillary data. It's not always possible, sometimes your proposal is the first proposal in a series of, uh, pro of, of projects in, in your in your scientific uh, endeavor. Um, but ancillary data from pre prestigious projects usually help the case. So if if you have them, then then this is this is very good for a proposal because you can combine the data and gain uh, uh, a lot. Um, what needs also needs to be discussed is the possible outcomes of the experiments and what if I detect this or if I don't detect this, these need to, to be discussed in order to convince uh, a program committee that time can be given. So, yeah, I want to observe um, a very faint galaxy in, uh, in the neutral hydrogen. What does it tell me if I actually do not detect it? with the sensitivity that I, um, uh, that, that, that I am I'm, I'm using. Um, the technical justification um, is actually the, the part where you can connect your science with the telescope. So you have to define figures of merit like sensitivity or dynamical range, uh, resolution. These are typically the three that are relevant for um, uh, imaging experiments with radio telescopes. So um, these have to be defined. You need to know how to calculate them. And then you have to show under which conditions these are reached. So how much observing time do I need? What is the integration time per uh, uh, per shot, per single shot? Um, what is the calibration time and other overhead slewing time, for example, of the telescope? And uh, in many cases, as is the case for Mercat, uh, there are observatory tools to support these predictions. Sometimes they're even asked for to be appended uh, to the uh, proposal. Um, one other aspect is, of course, the avoidance of RFI can observe during daytime. And there's the sun up, which would uh, uh, have a bad influence on my observations. 
Um, one thing is that your time request should precisely match these requirements. So th this is, as I said, so this is a competitive situation and an error here is the best opportunity for a, a, a program committee to downgrade or reject a proposal. Try to make no mistakes here. Um, so even even if, it's, if it is silly, um, try to make no, no mistakes, no wrong statement in, in your proposal about um, figures of merit that you uh, want to achieve with the telescope. Um, as I said, these days you have a lot of data and you need to prove or you need to show that um, you are able to um, to get the science out of your data, and uh, this is this is why sometimes in proposals uh, a description of your analysis process is asked for. So how do you do, uh, reduce the data? How do you uh, produce the final data product, and how do you analyze this data product? Do you have the means to retrieve the data? Do you have the, the computing resources and also the human resources? Do you have people? Who know how to reduce data, and luckily you're currently sitting in a um, in a school that will teach you to do so. So you can say I'm, I'm able to do it. Um, and again, uh, you, you can use observatory tools in some cases to support the predictions. So uh, computing compute uh, requirements, cal calculators. Well, and then you have to show that the requirements are met. Well, I'm able to reduce data, I have a computer, and so on. Um, then there's final considerations about writing the proposal. So there is the author. Choose the right PA. So one nation, uh, uh, so you have a, a team of two pro proposers. One is from the nation that spends 100 million units, and the other proposer is from the uh, from the nation spending 100 units or uh, million units. So, who would you choose? Uh, and and the, the the observatory is uh, somehow trying to get a, a balance between those those two contributions. I mean, just um, I mean proportional to the investment. So it's pretty clear that you would probably choose the PI, choose as the PI, uh, the one uh, with the million investment. No, of course not. So you would choose the one who who uh, gives the best advantage for your uh, for your proposal, which would be the, the the one with the nationality or the institute affiliation um, of the of the the richer country or the more spending country. Um, try to get the abstract as briefly as possible, or as brief, make the abstract as brief as possible, and that make it highlight the impact of the project. We have the great project, but not, I mean, prove it in two sentences. Um, you have to highlight uh, human capital development aspects, if applicable. If you have students, if you are a student, say, I'm a student, and you want students, you want to support students, so please uh, uh, take this into account if you want to evaluate my proposal. Um, so, if applicable, so if, if there is a if there is a call where equity aspects are play a role, then discuss even this. Um, status of former projects. This is where you can prove, as I said, that you're capable of uh, publishing scientific results with the instruments. So please do so uh, in, in in some detail if you have done so. If you can prove, I'm I'm able to produce results that get published with this telescope. Um, so, now let's talk about the specifics of MERCAT and MERCAT proposals. MERCAT is an interferometer which uh, is situated th uh, 30 degrees south um, of the equator. 
and it has 64 an antennas and currently has an L band or an operational L band uh, between 960 and 70 megahertz, a UHF band between 580 and 1050 megahertz, and uh, com in commissioning an S band um, at higher frequencies. Um, it has a set of uh, backends uh, which determine how fine your uh, channel width is. Um, it has wide band and narrow band modes. Um, and uh, and a certain sensitivity, which is actually very good. It makes it the best telescope in the world of its class uh, today. <clears throat> Mercat has uh, different projects. Um, there are the, the large survey projects, uh, which are very prominent at Mercat. Originally, it was thought that it would take all the time on Mercat. There are eight of these uh, large survey pro pro uh, pro programs. Luckily, uh, America got more sensitive than thought, such that there is uh, time for the other projects named this, the director's discretionary time projects, currently uh, about a little bit more than 20 small projects, taking about 5% of America time, not more. Then there is non-computed telescope time, uh, which are stake, which I described before as stakeholder projects. These are six uh, plus one uh, la large surveys. So what has been observed in early times of, of Mercat um, operations are um, Magellanic clouds, the galactic plane, a set of galax galaxy clusters, and the gal galactic center. There are open time projects. And so far, there were two calls. In the last round, uh, there were a thousand and maybe 1,300 hours awarded, in the, uh, which brings me uh, to this. Uh, the open time oversubscription is 3.4. So this is really a tough competition. So uh, of 3.4 proposals, only one is selected. <laughs> um, how to get Mercat data is laid out in the Mercat Telescope and Data Access Guidelines. There's the archive. Please check, always check the archive. Um, you can get um, other data by contacting PIs. Or finally, if nothing helps, write a successful proposal for the next proposal call. Um, to get archive data, um, there is a, a very nice description of uh, Mercat, uh, the Mercat archive. Uh, it has a search tool and an uh, archive access tool. So you can find this following the links uh, of this presentation, which is stored somewhere. Um, so the latest call for open time proposals um, was uh, in 1 July 2020. It's now closed, so you cannot submit any any other proposal anymore. And in the future, uh, the out layout will change. So what is allowed or not? Um, and um, and can be uh, can be read up uh, online. Uh, one caution is also in any call, read and follow the instruction before submitting a proposal, such that you do not make any mistake. So really read it carefully, even if it's long. Um, the last latest call had the objective to maximize the scientific impact of the telescope while contributing to South African scientific leadership and human capital development. See, all the um, aspects of optimizing telescope usage are somehow convolved in there. So if you read the call, then you will find more details about what it actually means, uh, uh, what this sentence actually means. It had a double blind review such that neither the reviewers would know who the, um, whom they, whose proposal they would look at nor the uh, proposals would know what the, uh, who the reviews are. This is to ensure a uh, maximum uh, of neutrality in the review process. 
and only imaging processes where uh, projects were allowed with some restrictions which surely will uh, change um, in the next call about what you can do with which receiver and which backend mode uh, that, that you, you have you were using for America um, I think I'll go over this pretty quickly. So the, the components uh, of the latest call were, I have basically laid out in, a, um, in my general description that I gave before. Um, so you had a cover sheet where you define author, title and abstract in the scientific category of your proposal. You had to specify the targets and other details. Then the science case was four numbered pages. Um, what also needed to be provided is a data, data analysis plan. Um, the output of sensitivity calculators that were actually or are provided by, uh, by the observatory and the status of previous observations. So and did you actually manage to uh, publish Mercat data? Then uh, there was the request to specify uh, human capital uh, development details. Um, there was a continuum, or there is a continuum sensitive cal calculator, and for the follow for, for the next call, this will certainly also be the, the, the case. So, in for the continuum, for a continuum proposal, um, um, proposing radio continuum signs, considerations like dynamic range and resolution had to be taken into account. Of course, <clears throat> there is uh, the um, sensitivity uh, that you uh, have to calculate. Uh, the sensitivity of the, the telescope is known, and you can use the con continuum sensitivity calculator for the instrument. For neutral hydrogen, or H1, um, the sensitivity calculator, uh, another sensitivity calculator was available where you could uh, combine resolution aspects and sensitivity uh, or observing time to determine whether you can actually uh, reach your science goals um, um, using with the telescope time that you're investing or that you're proposing to invest. Uh, finally, there was a mosaicing calculator um, where you can determine the sensitivity even over a field in a mosaic uh, um, experiment or in a mosaicing experiment. Um, one specific uh, requirement was that uh, you should you were requested to do a test observing run uh, with the. Um, with Mercat before you submit your proposal. And uh, for this, and you can do this actually at home, you can use the observ observation planning tool, in this case, the light observation planning tool. And this gives you an insight of how these observations are actually structured. So you add an observation block. I want to observe that target that you then define. Um, it contains uh, four hours um, of ob observing time, on source observing time for a certain number of sources. These you can define. You can define the source and the flux and the bandpass calculator, in, in this case, the standard J1939 minus 6342. This tool also helps you to find uh, um, um, uh, continue, uh, the, 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 the gain calibrators of, of, of your observation and a polarization calibrator. So this is a pretty luxurious tool with which you can lay out your observation one by one. And you can see here the duration of the, of the, of the of single observations of calibrators and actually the source that you can then specify. After that, you make a simulation um, 
and um, and look whether uh, the uh, the targets actually can be observed. And one outcome of these simulations was the total observing time. So this is different of the the, the observing time on source because the simulator also simulates slew time and things like that, such that in, 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 in effect, the total observing time, and this is what you had to, had to request in your, in, in your proposal, is slightly larger than actually the total on-source observing time. It's a trap that people have been uh, stepped into. This is why I'm mentioning it. Um, on top of just presenting this uh, very nice um, observation planning tool, so you can play around with it and do and and and, and play planning your observation uh, now even before you write a proposal. Um, which brings me to the summary. Um, observing proposals are an integral part of telescope planning. So I hope I have convinced you that it's necessary to uh, plan to. Do so telescope planning. Groot Reber didn't need to, but we do. Um, and observing proposals are a good way to do that. Um, and in most cases, the selection process will be competitive, so you have to write a good proposal. Proposals are all similar. They have a title and an abstract science, scientific justification, and technical justification. And uh, um, and well, maybe a part as part of the technical uh, justification and feasibility of analysis, um, uh, you have to prove the feasibility of analysis too. The best proposal has only one objective and has a very clear scientific aim. Reach that threshold, I will provide the best science. I think that's it. Um, read. Please read the call for proposals carefully and follow all instructions. Do not confuse uh, total integration time with, uh, with on-source integration time, for example. Uh, and check the archive beforehand if you actually need to write a proposal. Uh, proposal writing is fun, <laughs> but uh, you other things are tools you might save the time. Um, and finally, Mercat has uh, several tools to ease the proposal process, and using them is uh, compulsory uh, for uh, Mercat uh, proposal calls. Which leaves me with wishing you good success with your proposal for the next deadline. Thank you.